have your Bibles, I'm going to ask you to stand for a minute. I just want to read the scripture and out of reverence for the word of God. I ask that you stand. Bless the Lord. We will be reading from the ninth chapter of the book of Hebrews, the ninth, 19th through the 28th verse. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and goats and with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and the people, saying, This is the blood of the New Testament which God hath enjoined to you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry, and of almost all things are by law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood there is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in heaven should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves were better sacrifices than these. For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet that he should offer himself often as a high priest entered into the holy place every year with blood of others. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, but unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. May the Lord add a blessing Amen. to the Amen. reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Bless God, bless God, bless God. Thank God for the word of God. Truly we thank the Lord for his favor and his grace. Bless the Lord, you may be seated. Truly God is indeed a good God. I thank the Lord for his word. I thank God that God is so faithful. I thank him because in the process of time, God is able to continually develop the believer to be all that the Lord would have us to be. My Lord. You know, the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Yeah. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And I thank God for his faithfulness. I thank God that God is better to us, better to us than we've been to ourselves. We live in terrible times, but throughout the times, throughout the process, and throughout all that we go through, even right now, God is ever with us, and I thank him for his promise. He said he would never leave us, nor forsake us. So I'm grateful to God that God has my back. How many know God has your back? Amen. How many know that? I mean, do you really know that yes, God yes, yes. has your back? Thank you. He told Moses, Amen. As he was going in the process of leading the children of Israel and even through the 40 years and in the process of all the ups and downs, he told them that, that I not only, excuse me, go before you or behind you, but I'm before you also. I'm going to lead you through the process. And I'm glad God leads us through the process. Um, if I might use for a word this morning, something to encourage your heart, it would be purge me Lord. Purge me Lord. Literally purge means to cleanse. So Lord continue to do what you've been doing. Change my life. Purge me Lord. The Israelites themselves had a long history of dysfunction with God. Mm -hmm. Yes it did. A long history. Now we can't blame the Israelites too much. We can also look at ourselves. We have a history of dysfunction with Amen. God. Amen. But the Israelites had a long history of dysfunction, especially when it came to obeying God. On one occasion, they would remember God, and then they'd go along for a while, and then they would forget God again, and then the same process would begin over and over again. But how many know God is merciful? God is merciful. And it's safe to say that, you know, when you look at God's word, he can't be surprised. He's sovereign. So God knew their response he knew how they would behave themselves. He knew that, okay, they're going to be good for a minute, and then they're going to turn again, and I'm going to have to do something else in their life to bring them to a place of 
obedience. How many times has God ever brought you to a place of obedience when he tried and he was merciful because he saw fit to speak to you? Saw fit to speak to you and said, listen, I'm going to bring you out again. Uh -huh, I'm going to bless you again. Even in spite of yourself, it's not because you're good, and that's that's a good thing to know, but it's not because we're good, but it's because God is good. Amen. And he's a good God. And he always has a plan for your life, even as he did Israel. Listen to God's reply when he, uh, uh, to uh, the prophet, uh, in, uh, the uh when he was speaking to Paul at the to the church at Rome, and he was talking about the mercy of God or God's benevolence toward the Israelites. He said in Romans 9, 15, he said, For he saith unto Moses, I will, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. God said, Listen, I can do what I want to do how I want to do it, when I want to do it. If I want to bless you, I'll bless you. Whether you deserve it or not, I'm God, and it's my will, not yours. Isn't that good to know Amen. that God will bless us even in spite of ourselves? We mess up, and it seems like God don't cut us off. He still keeps us and gives us the grace to endure, grace to repent, grace to get through, grace, grace to make it right. Because understand this, if it was the will of the enemy, he cut you off when you were walking in your rebellion. But God will have mercy Amen. in the midst of your rebellion and bring you and woo you and call you and, and, and trust to you and begin to bless you when you say, listen, I really don't deserve this. So it must be God on my side. Amen. 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 Excuse me. Say it must be God on my side because that's the kind of God we serve. Yes. He's merciful and he's more than able. More than able. When David sinned before God and he was he was doing penance, if you will, and asking God to forgive him, God had mercy on him. He sought God out and said, Lord, wash me. Yes. Wash me. Yes. Because he knew he had to be clean in order for God to be right before God. He said, Lord, wash me. In the 51st Psalm, he said, Lord, wash me. He said in the 51st Psalm, he said, have mercy on me. And, and oh God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercy. He said, blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly. Yes, so fix it, God, from my iniquity. And cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression. And he said, my sin is ever before me. David said, listen, watch me, God. Fix this thing. You got to purge me. You got to cleanse me. You got to do whatever you do because you God and fix it. You ever want God to fix it? You ever want God to straighten it out? If you love God, you do. Mm -hmm. If you love God, you do. There are times when you recognize and accept God do it, it won't be done. Except God bring me out, I'm going to stay where I'm at. Sometimes we just say, Lord, help me. Have mercy. David said, Lord, blot out. Blot it out. Watch me, but blot out my transgression. Because really the memory of it is worse than the penalty. I keep thinking about it. So he said, God, blot it out. Wash me. Purge me from my sin. Purge me. Cleanse me again. Wash me again. After, now, now you can understand why God got kind of upset at Peter when Peter had a problem with Jesus washing his feet. He said, Lord, you never wash my feet. You won't even touch me. And then Jesus told him, listen, if I don't wash your feet, if I don't do the cleaning, if I don't do the process, he said, you won't have no part in me. Amen. Woo, glory. Doesn't it seem like God wants us to be better than we are? Doesn't it seem like God wants to take us to a place that we could have never arrived at except God do it? Yeah. Peter got caught up real quick. He came to himself, had a reality check, and he said, Lord, don't just wash my feet. Wash me all over. Yes, yes. Because he recognized that it wasn't so much the surrender. It was the fact that God was about to change it and cleanse his life. Yes. He 
got lost up in the fact and caught up in the fact that Jesus was bowing before him. He didn't see it like God saw it. And then when he saw the fact that God, he said, listen, I'm not teaching you about surrender as I'm teaching you about being made whole. You want to be made whole? Then I got to do it in order for it Amen. to get done. Glory to God. You can run to everybody, but until you run to Jesus, it'll never, it'll never get done. Glory to God. Wash me, Lord. Purge me, Lord. Yes, do what you do. See, because the consequences of sin is as bad as the memories of sin, the pain of it. The only remedy David sought was, Lord, blot it out. When you look at the definition of purge, it means to be free from moral guilt or blemish. Purge me, cleanse me from all that would stain me. If you look at in Catholicism, they believe in purgatory. They teach purgatory. It's not a biblical concept, but they teach purgatory. And basically what they're saying is you're going to have a space or time to be cleansed before you come before the Lord. No, no, no. There ain't no layovers and ain't no stopovers. When you leave here, the Bible says there's a point on the man wants to die and after death, the judgment. No, you won't be in no holding pattern. You won't be in a situation where you're sitting and waiting and washing up and getting ready. If you ain't ready on this side of, the, of, of judgment, you won't be ready on the other side. Amen. Amen. So purging means to cleanse. And unfortunately, like I said, a lot of people got it wrong and feel like they're going to have another effort or another opportunity. But this is our time, the church, to accept Jesus Christ in his fullness and in his glory. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying that God can't do what he want to do, but understand this. You better take opportunity to accept him now. You better take opportunity to receive him now. The blessing of the gospel is ours right now. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Glory, glory, glory. Now is the time. Oh, glory, glory, glory. When the apostle Paul was explaining, if you will, to the, to the church at, at Corinth about the unrighteous and what the unrighteous wouldn't inherit, he told them that, listen, no unrighteousness is going to go into heaven. And the unrighteous, them that walk contrary, the liars, the thieves, the this, the that, all them that walk contrary to the gospel won't have an inheritance with the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God's people. There'll be a definite separation. There'll be a definite division. But Paul warned them also and said, listen, you were like that, but now you have been washed. Mm -hmm. You were just like the unrighteous. You were just like them who would do as they please. But he said, now ye are washed. First Corinthians 6 and 11. It says, listen, and such were some of you. But ye are washed. Thank God for the washing. Thank God for the cleansing. But ye are sanctified, set apart. God said, I wash you. I sanctified you and I justified you all in the name of the Lord by the Spirit of our God. God made us right in his own eyes. When the blood was applied, he began to see through crimson, if you will, lenses. Amen. When he pulled the lenses back, he could see you. So you got to have the blood applied. Woo. He's got to see you through the blood. Because when he sees you through the blood, he sees you perfect. And without stain and without blemish. Mm, thank you, Lord. Purge me again, God. I want to see myself more refreshed in your glory. God, do it again. Purge me again. I remember on the, when I was a young saint, we'd be at the we'd be at the altar. And folk felt that if you spit a little bit and you cried a little bit and you weep a little bit, you were being purged. But except the blood be applied to your life. No cleansing, no cleansing. Glory to God. Lord, I was reading this text, I got excited because I looked at all that he's done through the blood. Woo! And all he continues to do through the blood. We serve a living God who himself is alive and ever at the right hand of Almighty God. And the blood continues to flow on our behalf so that we can be what God would have us to be. 
has right. Uh, we have access. Uh, we have insight. Uh, we have touch because we touch the hem, if you will, of his garment so that he can cleanse us and say yes to your will. Amen. Amen. God, do it. Uh, do what you do. God, do it Amen. in a hurry. I'm going to read our text here, but you don't have to stay here, but I'm going to read our text out of the Amplified because it gives a little more clarity to the text. And I, I really want to expound on purge me, Lord. I really want to expound on what God did for us in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Glory, glory, glory. Look what it says in Hebrews 9 and 19. Out of the Amplified, it says, listen, it says, for with every command that the command of the law had been read out by Moses to all the people, he took the blood of slain calves and goats, together with water and scarlet wool with a bunch of hyssop, and sprinkled both the book, which was the roll of the law and covenant itself, and all the people, saying these words, This is the blood that seals and ratifies the agreement, which was the New Testament, the covenant, which God commanded me to deliver of you. And in that, that case, that was the Old Testament, but it was ratified by blood. And in the same way, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the sacred vessels and appliances used in divine worship. In fact, under the law, almost everything is purified by the means of blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is neither release from sin or and its guilt, nor the remission of the due and merited punishment for sins. By such means, therefore, it is necessary for the earthly copies of the heavenly things to be purified, but the actual heavenly things themselves require far better and nobler sacrifices than these. I'm going to stop right there at the 23rd verse. So, glory to God. Moses will call the people, or should I say God called Moses first, uh, and then Moses was given order by God uh, when they gave out the word, when they gave out the Old Testament, when they had the scrolls in his hand. The Bible said he called the people. Uh, he stood before them with the word of God uh, and sprinkled them uh, with the blood of a slain calf, uh, of a slain lamb, because the blood showed, uh, amen, not only forgiveness of sin, but it showed that the penalty of sin had been satisfied by the blood. Amen. So he sprinkled them. He sprinkled the book. He sprinkled the ornaments. He sprinkled the sacred everything because he wanted everything to be purged and purified. Oh, thank God for Jesus. The Lord had a way and a purpose, uh, but they had to do it every year uh, because it didn't last. Uh, it wasn't eternal. Uh, it wasn't a once and done thing. The priest, the high priest, would go into the holies of holies every year uh, for the penalty uh, and for the pain of sin for the people. Uh, but the Bible says Jesus went in uh, once and forever. Thank God. One of the one of the occasions when they did the atonement ceremony, and the, the, they would have two two uh, if you will two lambs. Uh, they bring in two lambs. Now the one lamb they would kill uh, and take the blood and put it on the mercy seat uh, because they wanted to pay the penalty uh, because there's a penalty for sin. Uh huh. And that's what they were there for. They didn't slay it just to slay it. Uh, they didn't slay it for amusement. Uh, but they took a lamb that was unblemished uh, and unspotted and slew it uh, and put the blood on the mercy seat. Uh, now the penalty of God was satisfied for another year. And then the second lamb, uh, they would walk over to uh, and symbolically put their hand on it. Uh, and it would symbolically pass the sin of the, uh, if you will, the sin of the people on the other lamb. Uh, but they didn't kill it. Uh, they said to that lamb, you got to pass. You can leave on out. Uh, they would release that lamb into the wilderness uh, because they got a pass. Uh, how many know you got a pass? Oh, glory. God set free uh, and caused your sins to go into, if you will, never, never land. Uh, and God gave you a pass uh, through the blood of Jesus. You were guilty, but God said, you ain't got to pay the penalty. Uh, you say, God, but I deserve it. He said, that's all right. You got a pass uh, in the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Amen. Once and for all. I thought about this. I said, oh Lord. You mean I still deserve it? Yes, you did. I had to give you a pass. I had to purge it. 
forever once and again. Glory to God. Ooh, God did it right. Nobody could have come. Ooh, glory. And done what Jesus did. Unspotted. Without sin. Without guilt. Oh, he was that Passover lamb. There it is now. He was that Passover lamb. Because they say, listen, you got to pass. And his name is Jesus. Ooh, glory. Thank God for the shed blood. Oh, yes, Lord. See, the life was in the blood. And the only remedy for sin was the sacrifice of blood. And that blood, if you will, was the sum of the equation. For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So that means you've got to be forgiven in order to be cleansed. You can't be cleansed if you don't want to be forgiven. Glory. Ooh, glory. God said, if you ask me to save you, and if you ask me to forgive you, then the blood has enough power to cleanse you. The blood. Make you right when you're wrong. Ooh, glory. Fix it when you couldn't fix it. Bring it and cause you to walk straight when you were walking crooked. Yeah. All in the blood. There's power in the blood. Lord, purge me uh, and make me clean. Uh, thank God for the Passover lamb because uh, God gave me a pass uh, and allow me now. Uh, I can walk in his presence uh, without the stain in my face uh, because the blood has been applied. Woo! Lord, that's why the scripture tells us, uh, oh God, in the fourth chapter of Hebrews, it says, go up boldly to the throne of grace uh, that we might obtain mercy. Uh, nobody could ever walk into God's presence without being clean. Uh, but because of the blood uh, and the past uh, that God has given to us, uh, I can walk up there boldly and say, Lord, have mercy. You're sitting at the right hand. Uh, I see where you are. Uh, and I come before you and say, God, have mercy on me because of the blood. Oh, God, purge me. Uh, purge me. Uh, I don't want nothing. Uh, my mother, my foster mother used to sing a song. Uh, Let nothing come between my soul and my Savior. So that his blessed face may be seen. Amen. Nothing between my soul and my Savior. When the deaf angel uh, was sent through Egypt, ooh, glory, and that was the curse that God had given on the children of, of Egypt, uh, and the children of Israel were spared uh, because of the shedding of blood. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It's Exodus 12 and 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, draw out and take your lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. Oh, God, you got a pass. You ought to remember that. Uh, God gave you a pass. You ain't blessed because you blessed. Uh, you blessed because God gave you a pass. You're guilty as anything, but God gave oh, glory to God. He gave you a pass. One lamb he killed. Uh, the other lamb he let go. Uh, and God let you go because uh, he gave you a pass. Mm, thank God for the blood. Look at this thing. And you should take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of your door of the house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to swipe the Egyptians and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and under the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door. Thank God for the pass. And will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto you uh, unto your house to smite you. He said, when I see, I sent the angel. God said, listen, I sent the death angel. I sent the trouble. I sent the stuff. I allowed you to go through some stuff. But when it got to your door, the blood was applied so it didn't smite you. I gave you a pass because you longed to me. You're mine. Woo, Lord, I can't unchoose you. I chose you. You're mine. Glory to God. God, purge me. Uh, I don't want nothing to come between me and you. God, purge me. Whatever I need, God, do it. Uh, whatever I stand in need of, God, bring it to pass. Glory to God. Thank God for the blood. Uh, oh, purge me. 
me, Lord. Purge me, Lord. The apostle uh, uh, John confirms in 1 John that the power of the blood is in the forgiveness of sins. 1 John 1 and 9, we confess our sins. He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Purge me, Lord. Oh, God, I want to go to the next level. How about you? Oh, anything in my life that's contrary, that's preventing the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, Lord, purge me. Purge me. What must I do? We used to sing a song here. Brother Johnson would sing it. Uh, what more shall I do? Uh, God, whatever it'll take, uh, purge me, Lord. Purge me. Purge me. Oh, God, cleanse me. That's what it means. Cleanse me. Oh, God. Oh, I stand needy. I don't know about you. I stand needy of God's grace in my life. I, I stand needy of his presence yeah. and his glory. I don't know what's behind the door. All I know is God said there's a door, and I got something for it. I'm just ready to open it up. But you got to be purged. You got to say, Lord, purge me. Do what you got to do so I can be what you have me to be. Oh, glory to God. The only thing hindering you is you. Oh, God's not hindering you. God is saying, come unto me. God is saying, here I am. All you got to do is believe it. All you got to do is take me at my word. I can't lie. So if I said it, I'll bring it to pass. Back to our text in the 24th verse, and I'm still reading out of the Amplified Bible. Glory, glory, glory. For Christ the Messiah has not entered into the sanctuary made with hands, only a copy and pattern of the type of the true one. But he has entered into heaven itself now to appear in the very presence of God on our behalf. Nor did he enter into heavenly sanctuary too to offer himself regularly again and again as a high priest enters the holies of holies every year with blood not his own. For then he would have to suffer over and over again since the foundation of the world, but as it is now, Glory. He has he has once for all at the consummation and close of the ages appeared to put away and abolish sin by himself, his sacrifice. And just as it is appointed for all men once to die, and after that the certain judgment. Even so Christ, having offered to take upon himself and bear as a burden the sins of many, once and once for all, will appear a second time. Thank God for the second event. The first time he came uh, oh as a suffering savior. The second time he'll come as the reigning king. Thank God for the cloud. Thank God for his return. Woo! Glory, 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 glory. Not carrying any burden or sin or to deal with sin, but to bring full salvation those who are eagerly, constantly, and patiently waiting and expecting him. He's coming again, beloved. Crack in the sky. The Bible says every eye shall see him. He'll descend on a cloud. Catch up the church. Oh, glory to God. And then make his, make, make his, his ascent or descent into Jerusalem. Why? To take up reign and authority as king of kings and lord of lords. Glory. There are three things I'd like to consider when I speak of, Lord, purge me. These, there, there is no consecration, meaning dedication or commitment, to God apart from expiation, which is dealing with the penalty and the guilt of sin. Man could not approach God and be right with him without the shedding of blood. When I think first about expiation, it deals basically with covering, the covering of sin. If you turn, if you will, to, if, if you can, Genesis 3 and 7, and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And they heard the verse of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Glory to God. One of the things that the Lord purges us as a process of our obedience in taking God at his word is the, is the, is the dealing with the guilt as well as the penalty of sin. We cannot hide it. Adam and Eve failed God. They failed God. 
God told them not to eat of the tree of good, the knowledge of good and evil. They went ahead and ate. And they were in communion one with another when they ate. Amen. And God had mercy on them because they didn't die. But they experienced spiritual death. So they lost that spiritual connection that they had instinctively with God. And God had mercy on them. Now the interesting part is, because of their disobedience, they sought to cover themselves because they first, for, and for the first time, experienced guilt. So they sought to cover themselves, and the Bible said they took basically fig trees or leaves to cover themselves. How many know you can't cover yourself, that God sees you naked? How many know that God sees you? I don't care if you're in a black room uh, in the bottom of the basement uh, and nobody knows you're there and nobody can see you if they open their eyes. God sees you. Yeah. You can't hide and they couldn't hide. They had hid in the bushes, uh, hiding away from God. Uh, and God said, where art thou? Uh, and the interesting part is God knew where they were, but God knew that they attempted to cover themselves uh, with insufficient cover because we can't hide sin. Amen. Sometimes we think we're getting away with it and God says, I see it. I love what the Bible tells us in St. John, the third chapter. He said that men would come to God, but they don't come because their deeds are evil and the light will expose them. And the interesting part is God knew what Adam and Eve would do, but they tried to cover themselves. They couldn't Expiate. The word is expiate their sin because they couldn't handle the penalty and the guilt of it. Only God can handle uh, oh Lord what we mess up. Uh, only God can handle uh, what we destroy. Uh, only God can handle uh, what we go through. Uh, we serve a God who's able to keep us even from ourselves. Amen. So look what God did. Woo, glory. God said, you didn't cover yourself. Uh, all you was doing was hiding. Uh, and that's what sin will cause you to do. It'll cause you to hide. Uh, it'll cause you to run. Uh, it'll cause you to sneak. Uh, it'll cause you to feel guilty. Uh, it'll cause you to feel bad. Uh, why? Because it's a temporary covering uh, that never covers a thing. Uh, because sin is naked before the world. Folks see it. Uh, the only one that don't see it is the one who lets the sin out. They don't see their sin. Uh, that's why God's got to open up their eyes. Yes. You didn't know how bad it was in the world until you got saved. Amen. You thought you was doing pretty good. You thought everything was well. But once God took the scales off your eyes, you saw your condition. Yeah. So they tried to hide themselves after being disobedient to God. But God said, no, I got a remedy for this. Uh, and then God said, listen, I got a remedy for this. Uh, in Genesis 3.21, he said, unto Adam also and his wife did the Lord make coats of skin and clothed them. Where did God get the coats of skin? Uh, he didn't take their skin. Uh, he took the animal skin uh, because he sacrificed. Uh, but because, because of their sin, uh, the only thing that could cover their sin was the blood. The only thing that would give them a right relationship with God and allow them to come before his presence was that God would offer a sacrifice of blood. Because without the shedding of blood, yes. there is no remission. In other words, it doesn't cease except blood flow. Oh God, thank God for the blood flow. Yes. Thank God for the blood flow. Yes. Mm. It was the blood. Because when I was going through my hell, going through my situation in my life, God allowed the blood to flow and kept my mind and kept my life and kept me. Yes. Thank God for the blood. Uh, that's why I can go back to uh, say, uh, 1 John 1 and 9. Uh, if I confess my sins, uh, he's faithful and just uh, to forgive me and to cleanse me or purge me from all sin. Uh, that sin don't have to kill me yeah, because the blood is yet flowing on my behalf. Yes, thank you. That's if I confess it and believe it and take God at his word. So there has to be glory to God, the expiation of it, dealing with the penalty, yeah. if you will, glory to God, and the consequences. Thank God for the covering that covers us so that 
even though we were guilty, God has given us a pass. You got to remember that. See, see, when you begin to get hard on yourself, uh, when you begin to knock yourself, uh, and you talk about what you ain't got and what you ain't doing uh, and what you'll never become, uh, God will look at you and say, I gave you a pass. Uh, you should have been dead, but I gave you a pass. Woo, glory. All because of the blood. Secondly, when you look at not only the expiation of sin, when you look at our consecration to God, when we yet seek to honor God, God said, listen, not only do I deal with the penalty and the guilt, uh, I deal with your consecration, I deal with your dedication to me. Doing it right matters to God. Trusting God matters. Doing what God says matters. The Bible says in Hebrews 11 and 4, by faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speak. If understand this, Cain and Abel, uh, amen, Adam and Eve's first children, uh, and the Bible said, listen to this, beloved, this blows my mind. The Bible says that, 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 listen, uh, Cain uh, was a till of the ground, but Abel, Abel watched the sheep, uh, if you will. God, Abel had the flocks, uh, and when it was time to offer a sacrifice, uh, amen, Abel remembered, uh, listen, that God spared my parents, uh, because understand this, parents talk to their children, at least they did, used to, and understood, they understood that God required a blood sacrifice in order for it to be acceptable. So even though Cain was a tiller of the ground, he still could have sacrificed an animal. But Abel did it right. And the Bible says two reasons why he did it right. First off, he did what God told him to do. And secondly, he offered to God what God expected. I used to read that verse in Hebrews, Hebrews 12 and uh, 1, not Hebrews, Romans 12 and 1. It says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. A holy and acceptable sacrifice. In other words, even though it's the least that God requires, it is what God requires. Yes. It's what he requires. Yes. And Abel knew this. So Abel said, first of all, I'm going to give God what he asks. And secondly, I'm going to sacrifice the proper animal without blemish so that God can be glorified. And the interesting part, his brother got jealous. Because God said, Abel, I love what you did. But Cain, I got a problem with it. Uh, you didn't do what I asked. Uh, so instead of Cain taking it out on God, Cain took it out on Abel. And the interesting part, he killed him. And the Bible says that his blood, glory to God, his act was righteous. His act was right. His act was obedient. Uh, even after you leave this life, uh, folk will remember your righteous acts. Because the Bible says his act, his blood cried out from the ground uh, because he was right and not wrong. Don't tell me what the blood, people, you know a lot of times you think folk ain't listening up, but folk remember, folk know what's right and what's wrong. They might not acknowledge it, but God knows they know it. Because if Cain's, if Abel's blood could speak from the ground uh, and he was dead, uh, I know your life can speak while you yet live. Glory, don't stop doing right. Don't stop doing what God called you to do because somebody's speaking about it. It's making a difference in somebody's life. Saul had the same problem with David. Oh, yes, he did. When he was king, he thought he had it all. He was tall and good looking and everybody loved him, but he still didn't know how to obey God and do what God told him to do. God said, you kill all the Amalekites. Saul said, huh, I'm going to kill what I want to kill and bring back to God what I want to bring back. When he came back, ran into the prophet Samuel and he said, Samuel, I've done what God called me to do. Samuel said, well, I'm I hear the sheep? How come I hear the lambs? How come I hear all this stuff in my ear if you've done what God called you to do? Stop trying to impress me. Stop this with what God is saying. Stop trying to be cute. Just do what I ask. Amen. Purge me again, Lord. Yes. I've been trying to do what I want to do. So God, purge me yes. again. Amen. Woo, glory. My, my, my. He 
So do what God told you to do. He said, if you've done what God told you, I want to hear all these animals in my ear. Mm. And he said, don't you know that rebellion is like witchcraft? Huh? And it's better to obey than to sacrifice? In other words, God don't need your sacrifice. Mm. God needs your obedience. Amen. And if you obey God, the sacrifice will fall right in line. See, obedience is the issue. If we obey God and stop trying to convince God that we are smarter than God, then we'll never, then we can come to the point that we can walk in the favor of God. Yes. Glory to God. Purge me, Lord. Purge me again. Do what you do. I'm like Peter. Wash me some more, God. Wash me some more. Glory, glory, glory. And finally, propitiation, propitiation, which is the propitiation is the satisfaction of God's divine anger by the blood. First John 2 and 1. He says, my little children, these things that are written unto you, that you sin not, and if any man sin, we have an advocate. Jesus on the right hand of God with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the propitiation, or the, if you will, the satisfaction of God's divine anger. He's, he's who God sent to satisfy his wrath. Yes. So God said, that's all right, you got to do nothing else, I'm satisfied. Because you know Jesus Christ, and he sits at the right hand of me, he said, I'm satisfied. Don't need nothing else. Uh, all you got to do is trust him because uh, he's your advocate, which is a lawyer. He's your help. He's your strength. He's your keeper. Uh, purge me, Lord, uh, so that I can see the Lord in the fullness of his glory. Purge me again, God. Look what he says here. And he is the propitiation of our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandment. Thank God for the blood of Jesus that satisfies the wrath of Almighty God. No longer do I have to appease God. Now all I got to do is obey God. That's right. Woo! Thank God for the blood. Lord, keep the blood flowing. Keep the blood flowing. Keep the blood flowing. You know, if somebody drops dead right now, uh, the first thing they feel for is not a pulse. Uh, it's a pulse, uh, but they're not trying to feel a, a, a feeling. Uh, they're not trying to get a rhythm, uh, but the rhythm is made by the blood. Amen. If there's no blood flow, there's no life in the body. Thank God for the blood flow. Because uh, when they reach down and touch me, uh, God feels a, per a pulse uh, because the blood is flowing. Yes. Thank God, Lord, let the blood flow. Let the blood flow. God, if I got to forgive anybody, God, I forgive them. If I got to make it right, God, I'll make it right. Because I want to feel a pulse. And that pulse be the blood of Jesus flowing through my veins. That pulse be the blood of the Savior giving me strength and, and victory and all that I need and whatever I need. Thank God for the blood. Lord, purge me. Purge me, Lord. I need it. There's some things in my life I need to get right. God, purge me again. Mm. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank God for your word. God is more than able to keep you purged and keep you cleansed. And you look to him. He's coming again. He's about to crack the sky. Why? Because the signs, the indicators, is letting us know that this world won't be here for long. God's got a purpose and a plan. The Bible says, listen, uh, in 1 John 3 and 1, uh, Behold, uh, what manner of love uh, the Father hath bestowed upon us. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, uh, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knows us not, uh, because it knew him not. Beloved, uh, now are we the sons of God, uh, and it doth not yet appear. Uh, I'm a child of God right now, uh, because Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, sir. And it does not yet appear. It hasn't been made known yet. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know when he shall appear. Glory to God. We shall be like him. And because I'm looking to him and I'm expecting to be like him, the Bible says every man that hath this hope purify or cleanse himself or purge himself even as Up. Do what you got to do. Change what you need to change. Straighten out what you need to straighten out. Because as I 
as he changes my life. My eyes won't be hindered. My vision won't be slighted. I won't see him in darkness, but I'm going to see him in his glory because of who he is. Change me, God. Quicken in me. Make me like you had me to be. What is it you need from me, God? Here it is. Purge me. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Purge me, Lord. Purge me, God. You dealt with the penalty of sin. Oh, you did that because you covered me. You dealt with my consecration because you got me walking in order. You ordered my step start so I know that I'm walking in a consecrated mindset. So God, all I ask, Lord, is that as you are my advocate, as you have already dealt with the anger that will no longer be on me, God, purge me. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Purge me. That's right. Some things you're showing to me, Holy Ghost. Uh, so you got to purge me. Ooh, glory. That's why it says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Oh, yes. Not the same. Don't tell me you're saved and you're still the same. Don't, don't tell me you're saved and you haven't been transformed. God works from the inside out. God works in such a mighty way. One last verse. God bless you. God bless you. First Peter 1 and 18 says, listen, uh, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed or brought back to God uh, with corruptible things uh, as silver and gold as sheep, so I'm not throwing this in there, and lambs uh, from your vain conversation received by the tradition of the Father in the 19th verse, but with the precious blood. Glory to God. Lord, with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. God said, I bought you back. I bought, I burned you by my shed blood. I gave you a pass. You should have died, but I said, no, you're free to go. Glory to God. Purge me, Lord. Hey, yes, sir. I believe God is purging the church now. Purge me, Lord. Whatever it. Uh, whatever I need to do, uh, God fix it. Yes. Purge me. Purge me. Purge me. Whatever would hinder me, God, purge me. You know, purge me to cleanse. As I said before, yes. cleanse me. Yes. So that I can see you like the scripture says. Uh, Ooh, glory. Now are we the sons of God. Ooh, glory. And it does not yet appear. shall be. But because he purged me, the Bible says we shall be like him. You can't be like him if you don't want to be like him. You got to want to be. You got to will be willing to say, Lord, purge me. Purge me, Lord. I need it. Cleanse me, Lord. I need it. Fix me, God. I need it. Yes. Purge me, Lord.